going on guys? So I know it's been a while since I uploaded my last video. Um, my last video being painting the trunk. But uh, that's just because I've been doing a lot of work uh, getting ready to do the wiring on this thing. So in the last few videos I told you guys that my plan for the wiring on this is to uh, run Mega Squirt on it for the ECU. Get rid of the stock ECU that I put a bunch of work into and just go standalone. So uh, I've ordered the Mega Squirt. It's came in the mail and everything. Uh, I've started to work on it. Uh, it's a lot of work in terms of just research and stuff and figuring out what I want to run and how I want to do everything. So I thought this video I would go over what my plan is for everything and start working on it. So uh, let me think, where do I start? Um, let's see. So the two biggest things for Mega Squirt um, to get it to work, in my opinion, in my research, what it seems like is going to be um, figuring out the ignition input and the ignition output. So I'll start with the ignition input. Um, ignition input on this car stock is called the Subaru 6 slash 7 setup. And that's basically there's a two, uh, that crankshaft sprocket that the timing belt goes over has six teeth. And a crankshaft uh, position sensor reads those teeth. And then the camshaft sprocket also has uh, a wheel on it that has seven teeth. And then there's also a sensor there. And ECU takes that information and it spits it out, and that's how it decides uh, where to send the spark when. And um, it's possible to run that setup through Mega Squirt. However, it's sort of complicated, and I want to keep this nice and simple. So what I'm doing is I'm converting it to where I can run just a crankshaft position sensor. And uh, I'm unable to do that with that stock tooth wheel on there, that six tooth wheel. Um, so, I bought one of these. Let's see. One of these. So, it's a new crankshaft sprocket. And let me show you. So, this one is called a 36 2 2 2 uh, tooth wheel. And that's this wheel on the back. And basically, this, this is the sprocket that comes on all the STIs and I believe just all the WRXs and everything also. Um, but I'll, I'm going to slap this on there and with this I'll be able to run just a crankshaft position sensor. So that's going to be my ignition input. Just going to run the stock sensor itself and then that wheel. Uh, ignition output, I'm going to run a Volkswagen coil, uh, coil pack and that has the igniter built into it. Real simple. Um, basically it's going to have two outputs from the ECU and then a power and a ground and then that's it and then just gotta wire it up uh, spark plug wires correctly and that should be good and I'm doing that just because it's more simple than trying to wire in the stock igniter and coil pack uh, and that's sort of my goal for the wiring in this is just to keep it simple um, of course I'm gonna have to add I'm gonna have to add it like an intake air temp sensor a coolant sensor coolant temp sensor uh, what else uh, I'll add probably a wide band in the exhaust and that should be everything, I think. Maybe. Might be forgetting something. But that should be just about everything. But, uh, so the first step in all of this um, is going to be sort of setting up all the ECU. Because you have to configure the ECU. The Mega Squirt, they send it to you, just a blank uh, circuit board, and you got to solder all the components onto it. So um, I've already started on that. Um, here's a video for that real quick.
so I didn't, didn't I haven't finished um, soldering all the components on the board, but uh, I'll do that in the next video. Uh, basically, I'm setting it up to run the single VR input, which is the type of sensor for the crankshaft, and um, the specific coil that I'm running. So basically, those are the two things that I have to. There's different components that you put on or leave out or whatever, depending on your setup. So I, I've done that so that it's configured for that. Um, next step that I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to throw this uh, crank sprocket on. And to do this, all i got to do is pull the crankshaft, uh, the crank pulley off, pull the belt off, pull the timing belt off, and then the original crank pulley should just slip off, but it's been on there for, who knows, probably, you know, since 97, since the engine was made. Um, but pull that thing off. Uh, and then put this one on, and then put the timing belt back together. And I've showed you how to do how to take all the timing belt apart and stuff already, so I won't show you that, but I'll show you me putting this on. So guys, I just yanked the um, timing belt and all the pulleys off and everything, and then just loaded up that uh, crank sprocket with a whole bunch of penetrating oil, and just went in with this big ol' I guess, I don't know if it's more like a pry thing or like a chisel, but I didn't want to put too much pressure on the back of that uh, crank sprocket because apparently you can mess up the block pretty easily. But I just barely, here, let me set it down the camera so I'm not so shaky. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, just put it right behind there and it literally just slipped right off. So. That was nice and easy. I was expecting that to be a huge pain. So look. So, let me set up the camera real quick. So here's that sprocket I just took out of there. You see it's all covered in penetrating oil and stuff. But basically these are the teeth I was talking about. One, two, three, four, five, six. See they're sort of offset so the ECU could basically read it and tell where it was at when it compared it to the crankshaft or to the camshaft sensor as well and here's the new one so um, obviously there's a pretty big difference just the whole big load of teeth and the gaps here basically give it um, something to read so that it does not need the camshaft as well here I'll give you a closer look at that look at that nice and clean too so this one is just going to slip right over um, where this one was and then I can just put it all back together Nice and simple. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna throw this one on. So nice and easy, just slipped right on. And there it is. And now I just gotta assemble a timing belt and everything back again, make sure it's in time. And we'll be good to go. So after fiddling with it a bunch and trying to get it in time, I finally got it all put back together. So that's gonna be the end of this episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me, all the likes and comments and everything. If you guys have any questions, make sure to just leave a comment down below. Uh, if you like the video, don't forget to like. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Um, again, I really appreciate all the feedback and everything I've been getting on all, on all my past videos. Um, the next video, will be finishing putting the Mega Squirt together, the actual uh, circuit board itself. Um, I'll also be hooking up all the sensors to it and uh, like getting the engine ready to have the sensors mounted in them. I'll be pulling the injectors out and getting all the pigtails ready for that and everything. Um, and yeah, I should be getting all of my parts for that tomorrow. So should all go well. And uh, let me think, I think that should be everything. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time. Peace.